Hi everybody. In this lesson we want to look at solving some applications that end up in, in using rational equations. And in particular we're going to look here at a couple of work problems. So let's start off with this one. It says that Cedric can refinish the floor of an apartment in eight hours while Carolyn can refinish the floor in six hours. <clears throat> the question is how long will it take them working together to refinish the floor? And I think the first inclination of most students is to just add these together and get 14 hours and then quickly you realize that no, it, it certainly shouldn't be 14 hours. It shouldn't take uh, that long. And um, the next inclination is to just average these and say, well, maybe seven hours. And then you realize, no, it, it really ought to be less than six hours, right? Because even if uh, Carolyn did it herself, it would be six hours. Then she's getting help, so it should be less than six hours. And the reason that these seem uh, so counterintuitive is that we're thinking about that in terms of the the total amount of time it takes instead of the way that we really need to think about these, which is in terms of the rate of work. Okay, so the key concept <clears throat> for understanding these problems is this relationship right here, that if you multiply the rate of work times the time that they spend working, that will equal the part of the job done. And the key here is that it's a part of the job, which is a fraction, which our minds tend to uh, resist. And so typically these problems are posed in terms of the total time that it takes to do a job instead of the, the rate of work to do the job, which is a fraction. So, so the question is, how long is it going to take them working together to finish the floor? So I'm going to let T be the time uh, that they work together. Okay, and I'm going to organize my information in a little box here this way. Make that a little bit smaller there. Um, okay. So we'll just make ourselves a nice little box. And what I know is that the, the rate of work times the time working is going to equal the part of the job done. All right. Now there's there's two people working here. There's Cedric and there's Carolyn. And each of them has their own rate of work. Each of them has their own amount of time they work and each of them is going to do a part of the job. So this uh, helps us to organize our information. Now, the key here is that the rate of work is just the reciprocal of the total amount of time to do the job. So if, if Cedric does the whole job in eight hours, his rate of work is one-eighth of the job every hour. Okay, and likewise, if it takes Carolyn six hours to do the whole job, her rate of work is one-sixth of the job per hour. All right? Now, if you think about it that way, <clears throat> Suppose they work together for an hour. Well, in an hour, in one hour, Cedric does an eighth of the job and Carolyn does a sixth of the job. And if you add those together, that's going to be you know, a little more than a quarter of the job done. If they work for two hours together, Cedric would do two eighths of the job, right? He's, he's done a quarter of the job and Carolyn's done two sixths. That's a third of the job. So a quarter and a third, that's actually more than half the job done after two hours. In three hours, Cedric will have done three eighths of the job. That's almost half. And Carolyn will have done three six. That is half. So in three hours, they're almost done, aren't they? Okay. In four hours, Cedric would, would have done four eighths or half the job. Carolyn would do four six of the job, which is two thirds. So certainly in four hours, they're done. All right. So, so what I don't know is the time that they spend working together. Cedric's going to work on it T hours. Carolyn's going to work on it T hours. When I multiply T hours times one eighth of the job per hour, that gives me the fraction of the job that Cedric does. And likewise, the T hours that Carolyn works um, times her rate, one sixth of the job per hour, that's going to give me the part or fraction of the job that Carolyn does. And in particular, I want to find the value of T 
that makes the part done by Cedric plus the part done by Carolyn to equal the one whole job. Okay, so again, this isn't just an abstract one sixth t. <clears throat> that is the part of the job done by Cedric. And then the one sixth t, that's the part done by Carolyn. And then I want it to be one job. Now, if somebody had previously done, you know, a quarter of the job, so there was only three quarters left, then I could easily figure out where the part done by Cedric plus the part done by Carolyn was like a three quarters of the job, and so on. Okay, or maybe they had two two uh, refinishing projects to do. Then I could put two here, and that'd be, uh, you know, how long it takes them to do two jobs. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and solve this. Then I have a an equation. I have fractions. Let's go ahead and just multiply both sides by the common denominator, in this case uh, 24. And so when I distribute here I'm going to get 3t. 24 over to the 1 6 makes 4t. And this falls out pretty quickly now. So 7t is 24. So t is going to be 24 sevenths. And notice that's 3 and 3 sevenths hours. Okay? So that agrees with our intuition, right, that it was going to be a little more than 3 and certainly not 4. It's less than 4 hours. So 3 and 3 sevenths hours is the time it's going to take them working together to refinish the floor. Okay, let's go ahead and do uh, one more problem like that. <clears throat> this one's posed in terms of computer printers. It says we have uh, one printer uh, that works twice as fast as, as this other printer. And if the machines work together, it says a university can produce all its staff manuals in 15 hours. And the question is, you know, how long is it going to take each machine working alone to complete the same job? All right. So when we think about this, uh, if I let t be the time for one of these printers and 2t be the other one, I should think, well, 2t, that's a bigger number, right? So this has to be the slower machine. And so t is going to be the time for the faster machine. Okay, and 2t is going to be the time for the slower machine. Okay, now <clears throat> again I can just organize my information. Let me make a little chart here. I have the same relationship as we had in the previous problem. So let's organize our information in this nice little box chart here. And I know that the rate of work times the time working is going to equal the part of the job done. <clears throat> and I have the two machines. I've got the fast machine and I got the slow machine. All right, now if it takes t hours for the fast machine to do the job, its rate of work, I mean, suppose t was like 10 hours, then its rate of work would be one tenth of the job. And if it took 20 hours, the rate would be one twentieth of the job every hour. So it's still going to be the reciprocal 1 over t. If t is the total time to do the job, then 1 over t is going to be the rate of work. It's going to do 1 over t of the job every hour. And likewise, 1 over 2t, that's going to be the fraction of the job that the slow machine does every hour. Okay, so again, if t was like 10 hours, the fast one's rate would be 1 tenth of the job per hour, and the slow machine's rate would be 1 twentieth of the job per hour. <clears throat> All right. Now, what the problem tells us is that <clears throat> it says if they if the machines work together for 15 hours, they'll do the whole job, right? So, so the fast one works 15 hours and the slow one works 15 hours. So the part of the job done by the fast one is going to be 15 over t, and that's going to be a fraction of 1. It's going to be less than 1, okay? And then 15 over 2t, that's going to be the part of the job that's done by the by this slower one. And what I know, again, is that the part of the job done by the fast one plus the part of the job done by the slow one is the whole job, 
All right, so this isn't just an abstract 15 over t. This is the part of the job, and it's a fraction. It's the part of the job done by the fast machine. And then likewise, the 15 over 2t, that's the part of the job done by the slow machine. OK? So let's go ahead and let's multiply both sides by a uh, common denominator here, which is just 2t. So I'll multiply this side by 2t over 1 and multiply this side by 2t over 1. So you can see uh, uh, when I distribute here, I'm going to get 30t over t, and the t's will cancel, so that's just 30. When I distribute over here, the whole 2t cancels, and I get plus 15. And I get 2t there. So since 2t is 45, t ends up being 45 halves, or 22 and a half hours. Okay? So let's check and see if that sort of makes sense. So if t is, is 22 and a half hours, so that would mean that the fast machine, the fast printer, takes 22 and a half hours to do the job alone. And then the slow printer is going to take twice that, so it'll be 45 hours. to do that. Now, <clears throat> that, it, it should certainly be more than 15 hours for the fast one, right? So 22 and a half is reasonable in, in that regard. So if it, if it did take 22 and a half, and let's just use the fraction, let's use 45 halves. So if it took 45 halves for that one, then you'd have 1 over 45 halves. So this would be the, the rate of work. And if I multiply that by by the 15 hours, right, in 15 hours, let's see, what part of that would it be? That'd be 2 45ths, right, when I invert and multiply this, times 15, and then you'd see that the 15 and the, and the 4, 45, they would cancel, uh, and that just gives me 2 thirds. So in other words, what's that saying is that, is that in the, in the, um, 22 and a half hours, the uh, fast machine would have done two thirds of the job. All right, and in that same time, if I look at the 45 hours, all right, so one over 45 hours times 15. If this is the the rate of work, one uh, 45th of the job per hour times 15 hours, you can see that this is going to cancel, and that's going to be a third of the job. So the, uh, this does two-thirds of the job by the fast machine, right? And in 45 hours, if its rate of work is 45 uh, hours for the whole thing, or 1 45th of the job per hour, then in 15 hours, it does a third of the job for the slow machine. And if you put those together, that does make the whole job done. And notice that, that since the fast machine is twice as fast, notice it did twice as much, right? The, the slow machine did a third of the job, and the fast machine did twice as much, or two-thirds of the job. Okay? So that does make sense when we put it all together there and think through it.